Now, Singapore is inviting proposals for what could be the world's first low or zero carbon ammonia solution for power generation. It's hoping to work with interested industry partners to build, own and operate such power generation and supply solutions in Jurong Island. While the expression of interest or EOI will enable the Energy Market Authority and Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore to explore clean fuels like hydrogen and ammonia. It's part of efforts to help the country achieve its target of net zero emissions by 2050. And the aim of the EOI is to start generating a minimum of 50 megawatts of electricity from low or zero carbon ammonia by 2027 or sooner for up to 25 years. Interested parties can submit their proposals by the 30th of April next year. And uh, for more on what this means for Singapore's decarbonisation efforts, we are joined by Dr. David Broadstock, Division Head of Energy and Economics at the NUS Energy Studies Institute. Well, Dr. Broadstock, explain to us what a low or zero carbon ammonia power generation and bunkering solution is. Yes, thank you. Well, there are two parts to this, really. Um, there's the bunkering side, which is relating to the use of, uh, in this case, ammonia for providing power that will be used in shipping. And, and so this is where the Maritime Port Authority comes into the story, that, that ammonia and the hydrogen which it contains can be used to provide clean fuel for these shipping services. And of course, Singapore is one of the largest shipping hubs in the world. Uh, in terms of the low uh, or zero carbon ammonia for power generation, this relates then to the, the power generation fleet for the electricity supply within the economy and the opportunity to actually use the same fuel source, ultimately hydrogen, whether it's in hydrogen form or buried in ammonia, to provide energy services both for the domestic land power generation as well as the maritime uh, facilities. And, and, and Dr. Brostro, how is this EOI then a step towards developing, you know, a broader hydrogen economy for Singapore, as well as a potential niche area? Yes, well, well certainly there's the co-benefits, like I say, realising that you have potential to use the same single supply chain to provide fuel services that facilitate major transport as well as domestic electricity generation is, is something quite significant. There's also the idea that Singapore has the uh, ability to be a first mover into an area that could create broader economic resilience, not, not just something that benefits the power sector, but that helps maintain Singapore's position as a central hub for shipping in the future. And, and so, again, the Maritime Port Authority's role within this is, is quite notable uh, because for the future, there's a large chance that ammonia will be a very major fuel for shipping in the global shipping industry. And Singapore, in order to preserve its place as a central hub for that shipping, has the opportunity to bring ammonia fuel sources via bunkering uh, to the, the physical location within Singapore and preserve its place as a center within that shipping, uh, shipping, uh, shipping hub. Uh, Dr. Brostock, on hydrogen, hydrogen could supply up to you know, half our power needs by 2050. But what are the costs and, and the considerations of preparing our infrastructure uh, to support this? That's a very good question. At the moment, the technologies for using hydrogen and ammonia are still very much in development. There's many experiences which we're seeing and they give different price points. And, and this is because the technologies differ and the role of local circumstances can impact the, the costs of producing and using these powers. And so we need to look at the, the question of cost very carefully. Uh, what role will it play? Will it be a faster or cheaper transition. I, I think one important thing to recognize is that accelerating access to hydrogen and ammonia markets in scale unlocks important pathways. And for Singapore at the moment, these will be very critical pathways because we need to move away from natural gas in the uh, existing uh, supply of fuels for uh, domestic electricity generation, and then also to transition the uh, shipping fuel uh, mix that, that is currently in place. Uh, the costs may not necessarily be lower by doing this sooner, but the returns to this could be significantly greater if Singapore is able to secure itself uh, as a central terminal for that ammonia shipping um, fuel source. 
And also one important question is, you know, ensuring the safe utilization of uh, ammonia and hydrogen uh, in, a, in our electricity grid. So how, how can we ensure that safety? One of the good things about ammonia is, is that it's not a new commodity for us. It's something that we've actually been using for a considerable amount of time. And, and so the basic premise of safety around ammonia and hydrogen is something that we uh, know already how to handle. The, the new question which is emerging is how about when we use that as a fuel source or bring it into the power generation uh, side of things? And for this, standards will need to be developed. And, and this will be how actually Singapore can help promote safety, not just within Singapore, but actually internationally by, by taking a lead role in developing those standards. And these will need to be developed quite rapidly in order to allow deployment of these facilities within the timeframe that EMA is looking into. Uh, but I, I understand that Singapore is already thinking about this and, and in discussions about how uh, this can be achieved within near time frames. Oh, many thanks for your insights. That was Dr. David Broadstop from the NUS Energy Studies Institute.